Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and today we're going to write serverless functions with JavaScript. You could also call them AWS Lambda functions. And we're going to set up continuous deployment using GitHub and Netlify. Today we're going to build a basic application that utilizes serverless functions. And by the end of the tutorial, you'll know how to set up a serverless API relay to hide your API keys and you will never have to install the .env dependency. So let's get started. Serverless is a bit of a paradox because you are still running code on a server, but it lets you run backend code without provisioning or managing a server. And in that essence, it is serverless. So as Netlify says here, you can power your site without managing servers and you still have some backend code that can run. Netlify actually integrates with AWS Lambda, and that's where everything is happening. But you can integrate all of this into your Netlify projects, and that's great for personal projects, or even if you're putting some professional projects at Netlify as well. And you can see all the benefits of that, and here I'm at netlify.com slash products slash functions. And today we will build a serverless function, and then I'll show you more of a practical use case for a serverless function, although they list several right here and, and different integrations you can do and uh, great things you can build with Netlify or Amazon Lambda serverless functions. I have Visual Studio Code open. The first thing we're going to do is create a dist folder, and we'll put our project in that today because we'll be working with Netlify, and we can tell Netlify to launch our project or build our project if needed out of this dist folder. And there we will create our index.html and we'll start with that. The first thing I do is type an exclamation mark for the Emmet abbreviation, we can see. Choose that and we get a skeleton of a page. I'm going to press Control Shift B. No, I'm sorry, I'm going to press Control B, there we go, to hide the file tree and we'll get just a little bit more room to see everything. And here I'm just going to type serverless tutorial for the page title. And in the body, I just want an empty H1. Now I can right click and choose open with live server. If you don't have live server, go to your extensions in Visual Studio Code, search for live server, Choose Live Server and install the Live Server extension, and you can do the same thing I'm going to do, which is right click and choose Open with Live Server. And we should just have a blank page in the browser, and that's exactly what we've got right now. Serverless tutorial, this is the right one. Looks like I could close this blank one I had open. And now we will come back and create a CSS folder. And inside the CSS folder, I'm going to create a file named main.css. Let's start out our CSS file with the CSS reset, and that's margin zero, padding zero, and box sizing is border box. From there, we'll add some styles to the HTML root element, and we'll start with a font size that creates a base font size of 16 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and add the font family here of Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif, and then a font style. I'm going to use italic, and we'll add a color of white. After that, let's move on to the body element. I'm going to set a min height of 100 viewport units, and then a max width on the body of 1024 pixels so it doesn't extend as our page gets much larger. And then we'll go ahead and create a margin of auto so it centers the body if the page is larger. A display of grid, we're going to place the content in the center. And this will center our H1 much as if we had a flex box with a justify content center and a line item center. We can do this in just two lines with grid in this case. And let's set some padding inside the body of 20 pixels on all sides. Go ahead and save that. We don't have much CSS left to go. We'll add H1 and we'll align the text in the center of the H1. 
And let's go ahead and create a media query just for when the page gets larger. So we'll say at media only screen and min width 768 pixels, which is iPad size. On the HTML element, we'll just increase the font size to 24 pixels. And that is just some basic CSS. Now let's go ahead and create an image folder inside the disk folder. And I'm going to paste in an image and you can find your own image if you want to, or I will have this image in my GitHub repository for this tutorial that you can link to in the description. Okay, so here is just a basic city image from Tokyo. Now let's go back to the CSS and let's add this as a background. And I'm going to do it on the HTML root element. But first I wanna start out with a background color. Let's choose purple. Let's save this. And now we can go ahead and add the background image. This will be a URL. And now we'll go up one folder and then we'll choose the image folder and inside the image, we'll choose our city image. From here, we'll choose a background size and choose cover. And now let's go ahead and save this. And we need to link to our CSS. Although we don't really have any content, we should at least be able to see that background image. So let's add in the link, rel equals style sheet and href equals CSS main and we can save and now we've got our background image. Now if we come back to the CSS quickly we'll add one more line that will change the look of this a little bit and that is background dash blend dash mode and we're going to choose overlay. When I save that it gets that purple hue that we get from the background color as well. Let me go ahead and make this image larger once and you can see a nice large image with a more of a purple background so our text will show more on that. I'm going to go ahead and drag this back down. There we go. And that completes our basic CSS. Now let's go back to the file tree and in the disk folder let's create a JS folder. And inside the JS folder I'm going to create a main.js file. Now we can link to that file from our HTML Let's go ahead and do that and we'll choose script tag and there we'll type defer and after that we'll set the source equal to our JS folder and then the main.js file. And we'll save that and come back to the JavaScript file. Now we'll start with a function and the first will be called git random dad joke. And this will be an async function but we're not going to add all the functionality right away. I'm just going to return a joke to go ahead and set up the rest of this first, and then we'll come back and create this async function. I'm pasting in a dad joke. I'm going to press Alt-Z to go ahead and wrap the line here in Visual Studio Code, and there you see the dad joke. So that's what the get random dad joke will return. After that, let's go ahead and create a display joke function. And in the display joke function, we need a parameter of joke that we get back from the get random dad joke. So we can display it. And then we'll grab the h1 element. So there we need, need a document, I can spell better, query selector. And inside the document query selector, there's only one h1 on the page. So we don't need to be concerned about which one we're getting. It would get the first one, but it's the only one. And from there, we can change the text content to the joke we've received. But we won't be satisfied with just one joke. So let's go ahead and create a refresh joke function as well. And it will be async. No parameter needed here. And now we'll say the joke equals, let's go ahead and await the get random dad joke function because it is also an async function where we will perform a fetch eventually. And then we'll call that display joke function and we'll pass in the joke. And so that handles the procedure for both of these as we refresh the joke. But now we need to call this inside of a set interval. 
and now this will have an anonymous function and now inside here we can call refresh joke and then at the end of the interval we can say 10,000 which would be 10 seconds or to shorten that time up we could say 3,000 3 seconds and maybe 10 seconds or even 30 seconds would work for an application but in our instance we want to see it change faster than that so we'll set that interval to three seconds now the only thing we need to consider besides this oh and there we already have a joke which is our default joke and it won't be changing because we only have the one joke we also need to load a joke because right now let me go ahead and refresh this it's going to wait three seconds before the joke shows up and that's not what we want we want a joke right from the beginning so load the first joke we'll just need to call refresh joke one time on its own to do that and now it loads the joke immediately so if I refresh we instantly have a joke and that's what we want let's jump back to the CSS in the CSS I want to create a class after the h1 and I'm going to call this class fade dash in and we're going to set the visibility to visible and then we're going to set the opacity to 1, create an animation dash name. And I'm going to call this fade in opacity. And then an animation dash iteration count. And we just want one iteration. And then an animation dash timing dash function. And we'll call this ease in that's what we want not ease in and out we're just easing in or fading in and then the animation duration will equal one and a half seconds that might be a little bit long considering we're showing a new joke every three seconds but let's work with that for now and then we'll set the keyframes for the animation we'll say it's our fade in opacity animation and we'll start at zero percent and there the opacity will be zero and then we'll set one for 100 percent there the opacity will be one now we need to add the fade in class to our joke we'll go to the index.html and on the h1 we'll go ahead and add the class of fade in and save now we see our joke fades in and of course we'll only see it when it loads right now because we're not changing jokes now back in the JS file our main.js file let's go ahead and put in our async functionality here instead of returning our default joke so we'll delete this and we'll start with the URL and that equals I can has dad joke from I can has dad joke .com. And from there, we need to follow their API guidelines. So we'll set our joke stream equal to await fetch. We'll pass in the URL, but then the I can has dad joke API needs some headers, or at least a header, so we can get the joke back in the JSON that we expect or want to get back. So we need to set the accept header to application slash JSON. From there, we want our JSON we receive, our JSON joke, equal to await, and then we've got the joke stream, and we'll call the JSON method. Now we have JSON, so now we can get our joke, and that's going to equal JSON joke dot joke, and then we'll return the joke, and we'll save now we have a new joke over here and then it changed and now it changed again and you can see the progression before moving on just a quick refactor I'm so used to writing set intervals and set timeouts with an anonymous function that I did that when I only have one function to call it's not really needed I can just do it this way so I name the function and then of course give the timeout and here we're at three seconds and it's changing rapidly let's change this to 10 right now and we can save and now this joke will last here a little while longer but the refresh will still work 
Now we're ready to start our deploy with Netlify and work on a serverless function that will replace our git random dad joke function or actually work with it, but it will change how we create or what we do with this function actually. So I'm going to open up a terminal first and I'm going to say git init and now I've initialized git. I'm going to add all from git and then I'm going to commit and I'll just say first commit. And this is ready to be pushed to GitHub, but we haven't created a repository yet. So I'm going to expand the browser. I'm going to go to GitHub. And from there, you want to go to your repositories. And once you're at your repositories, click New Repository. And there you can name what you are putting together. And I'm going to call this serverless. And from there, we'll leave it as public. And we don't need to create a readme or anything. We'll just create a repository. Once you do that, GitHub gives you the instructions to link your Git on your computer to the GitHub repository. I usually copy this first line and then we'll just type the rest. So you've got the remote and you're adding the origin. And then you change the name of the branch domain, which is now the standard convention instead of master and then you push your repo to GitHub. So that's what we'll do. And I'm going to expand Visual Studio Code as well for that. First thing I usually do is just right click and it gives me that first line. Then we'll say git branch dash m main. And then you say git push dash u origin main. And now your code is on GitHub and ready to pull into Netlify. So let's go to Netlify. Okay, I'm logged into Netlify and I'm going to choose new site from Git. From there, I'm at continuous deployment immediately and I choose GitHub. And now it wants me to search my repos and I can search for serverless. I'm going to choose the serverless that we just created and the branch to deploy is main. We don't have any special build command or publish directory at this point, so let's just deploy the site. And it doesn't take long and you have a URL for your site, but it won't launch right now because we are using the dist folder instead of just the root base folder for the application. So we need to make a couple of changes and push those to GitHub because we now have continuous deployment and our code changes will go directly from GitHub to our deployed app right here on Netlify. The next thing we need to do if you don't have it is install Node at nodejs.org and of course it will take you to whatever version you need. But if you don't already have Node, go ahead and download the recommended version for you. And they have other downloads available if it doesn't correctly identify your operating system. Going back to Visual Studio Code, now that you have Node installed and Node comes with NPM, we can use NPM to install Netlify's command line interface. So then we type NPM and then Netlify-CLI dash G for global. I already have this installed, but this is what you type to install that. Go ahead and press enter. And now that you have the Netlify command line interface installed, we need to create a Netlify config file. And we don't want that inside the dist folder. We want it at the root. So close your dist folder and make sure you're in the root folder. And now create a file name netlify.toml. That's T-O-M-L. In your toml file, you want to use brackets and type build, and then underneath build, tab in and type publish equals, and now type dist with a slash and save that. Okay, now let's go ahead and create an extra line and tell Netlify where we're going to have our serverless functions as well. So now we have functions equal and type serverless and a slash, and that's what we'll name our folder. You could name it something else, but I will name it serverless today. And save this toml file. Now we're going to need to use a node package in our serverless file. So let's go ahead 
and install that package. And we'll need to initialize node first to do that. So we'll type npm init and dash y. And the dash y flag just says to npm, don't ask me all the questions as you make my package JSON file. So go ahead and press enter and it should create a package JSON file for us. And it does. That's all good. And since we're going to use npm, we don't want all those node modules in our Git repository. While we're also in the root, let's go ahead and create a .git ignore file. And inside the git ignore file, type node underscore modules so we don't add all of those node modules to our GitHub repository by mistake. Now that we've initialized npm, now we need to add our package, and what package we need is node fetch because fetch is not in node by default like it is in vanilla JavaScript. So npm i node dash fetch and press enter. It takes just a second to install, not too long. And now if we look at our package.json file, we can see that the node fetch right here is the only dependency. Now while we're still in our root folder, we need to create that serverless folder that we told Netlify we would have. So now we have created our serverless folder and we need to create a serverless function file inside the folder. So let's create plus on the file and I'll create jokes.js. And now we can create a serverless function with JavaScript. Let's start our serverless function by requiring node fetch so we can use it in the function. From there, Netlify serverless functions start with exports.handler, and this will be an async function. We'll have an event and a context parameter, or parameters, plural. From there, we need to define the dad joke URL again, and I'm going to paste that in. And we'll start a try block. Inside the try block, we'll define our joke stream once again. And that's going to equal await and fetch now that we can use it and pass in the URL we've defined. And once again, the dad joke API needs headers to know what type of data that we accept. And we'll tell it we accept application slash JSON. And that would be the end of that part. And from there, we can once again define the JSON joke, have that equal to await jokestream.json methods called there. And now we need to return an object as recommended by Netlify that has a status code 200. And then we can have a body. And the body has json.stringify and we pass in our JSON joke. We still need to handle our catch, and so here we'll have catch with error, and then we can return another object here that has a status code of 422, and I can't remember the exact wording of the 422 error, but it basically means it could not process the information and the error stack there. And I believe that completes our serverless function. And it doesn't run in our application in the browser. It actually runs on a server, which is the paradox of a serverless function. And really, in our function, in our main.js file, we only change these first two lines. Our URL will no longer be the dad joke URL. That's handled inside the serverless function. So let's define our URL. And the URL points at the Netlify serverless function. So we have .netlify between slashes, functions, and then the serverless function we defined, which was jokes. And now our fetch is more simplified. We don't have to provide the headers here. We just say joke stream await fetch URL. And now our serverless function should communicate with our application. Now with the Netlify command line interface installed, we should be able to type Netlify and dev and launch our application with our serverless function to test it out. I'll expand the terminal. 
And yes, we're at localhost port 8888 and our application is working with Netlify and we're using our serverless function to pull in these jokes. As you can see right here, it shows the GET requests. I'll expand the browser window. Now, as cool as all of this is, why would we do that? Let's go back and look at Visual Studio Code. And I'll get the terminal window down and expand it. Why would we go ahead and create a serverless function to get jokes that we could just get with the Fetch API from our browser? Well, that's a good question. And I'm going to press Control C to uh, stop Netlify Dev as well in the terminal. Uh, and there's really no need to do that. But what if there was some data that went with our request that we did not want anybody to be able to see if they sniffed our code in the browser? And this would be a great way to hide an API key. So let me show you another example of code where I'm doing just that. And I'll pull up my weather app that I will soon release a tutorial for. I know I've said that before, but it's coming along. Here's an example of my serverless function for a weather app. And I have a weather API key that is being pulled from Netlify environment variables. Notice that it's not um, being pulled. There is no dot env over here. If we look at the package JSON, the only dependency I have is node fetch. I do not have dot env installed as a dependency at all, but this still works because it's integrated with Netlify and the environment variables they provide. So my weather API key does work as a environment variable using uh, the same method that I would if I did have .env as a dependency. And you can see I'm sending in the event body to the Netlify function, the serverless function is receiving an object that has latitude, longitude, and units, and I deconstruct it right here from the params that are received, and then I insert that into the request URL, and this is all done through a serverless function, and it sends the data back to my weather app, and now my uh, weather API key is not visible at all. The only thing that is visible is the Netlify function's endpoint. Let's go to the browser and take a very quick look at Netlify. And if I look at the site settings now, I can go to build and deploy and choose environment. And this is where you can add environment variables, just like I was talking about. And then your serverless function will be able to pull them in and work with them. Hey, a quick reminder, I didn't show it at the end, but you need to remember to push your code to GitHub for that continuous deployment to Netlify so your serverless functions are working on the web. We were just working with them in that local Netlify dev environment. There are many use cases for serverless functions. As a matter of fact, if you Google use cases for serverless functions, you'll find lists and lists. One that I can think of that I would like to make a future tutorial about is image compression and resizing. Of course, when you have users upload images, you would probably want to resize and or compress those images. So that would make a good one for the future. Until then, the videos on the left may help you on your coding journey. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. I appreciate the support and I'll see you next time.